Hey everyone, I hope that you're having a fantastic day. Now, you guys know that we try to give you some fresh vlog content every now and then. Um, and so today, kind of winging it a little bit um, as I wrote this piece a week or so ago and need to refresh my memory on all the things I want to say. So this is a little less polished than what we try to do. I do have makeup on and I do have my hair done which is winning at the moment here in Metro Melbourne where I am recording. So today I'd like to talk to you about decision fatigue. So if you don't know what decision fatigue is or you've never heard that term before, it's essentially as, as we have to make consistent decisions right throughout the day, be it from what we're gonna wear, what we're gonna eat, what the kids are gonna do, um, what appointments we've got, um, are we gonna drive, are we gonna walk, are we gonna do this? Like we're constantly making decisions. Some of them are really small and they don't impact our day too much and some of them are really significant. But we do tend to get to a time of the day definitely a time of the year where our decision fatigue starts to set in and we start feeling the overwhelm of the mental load of decision making. So um, as you are entering this back end of 2020, it's been a bit of a roller coaster, I get it, but you're probably still feeling that because right now, especially for us in Metro Melbourne, we're starting to leave our homes again and we have to make decisions on who are we going to see and how we're going to do that and where are we going to go and and so you might be feeling that as well so i want to give you some tips on how you can reduce your decision fatigue especially as you go into the back end of the year and maybe you're thinking about your plans for 2021 and hopefully these will help you in that process so the first one I want to share with you is the Eisenhower matrix. So anyone that's followed the work that we share will know that we, and I personally love the Eisenhower matrix. So we'll put it up here so you can um, see it as I talk through it, but essentially it's a matrix that you push your tasks and decisions through, mainly tasks. And so you can identify when you need to do them and if you need to do them. So the concept is, is the task important and urgent, important and not urgent, not important and not urgent. So there's four kind of categories, you'll see them here. And essentially if the task falls in the category of important and urgent, you wanna be doing that as soon as possible. So you wanna schedule it on your to-do list for today, make sure it's in your calendar, make sure that you know when you're going to do it and how you're going to do it so it doesn't get lost. Important and not urgent tasks are things you schedule into your calendar for a later date. Now, that, that later date could be a month from now, it could be six months from now, it could be I need to go to get a checkup or get that medical test redone or whatever else, and that might be a six month thing because it's important but not urgent, but it may be something that you need to do in a month's time. So you'll know those tasks, um, you don't wanna let them slip off the list, but you need to schedule them in. Now, important, but um, urgent tasks are things like putting petrol in your car, it's washing up so you don't have a pile of dishes and you know ants and stuff in the kitchen. It's those types of tasks that you know just aren't super important on the on the list, but they do need to be done, and they are the ones you delegate. So you know how I feel about this. You could delegate to a life assistant, you could delegate to a staff member, you could delegate to a team member, you could delegate to a child. Um, there are lots of people that can help you when you're looking at getting those things ticked off. Um, so just be mindful of who you're delegating to and how you're doing that. Now the last category is the not important and not urgent. Delete, delete, delete. <laughs> Get rid of those things. You definitely don't need them on the list. They probably creeped on there because at one point you thought that they were important and that's totally okay. But keep in mind that they may not be important anymore. So let go of them, make sure that you're okay with that and step away from the task. So if you're running your items on your to-do list through that task, it will very much just help you with that process. And I do a, a quick scan of my to-do list and think about this methodology quite often um, because when you're looking at things that you've maybe scheduled for a later date, when that date comes up, sometimes those tasks are no longer important and they just need to be deleted. Now, Another tip that I like when it comes to decision making, uh, now this can be based on decisions around 
maybe hiring a staff member or purchasing an item or saying yes to attend an event or whatever else. It's the rule of no number seven. So if you had to rate something from one to 10 and you weren't allowed to choose the number seven, what rating would you give it? Six and under, from my perspective, is a no. And eight to 10 is like a hell yes. So we tend to give the number seven to things where we're trying to be kind and we don't wanna, you know, it's kind of a bit of an average number. So if you can't use the number seven, it helps you make that decision in a bit of a ruthless way, but it makes it really clear if it's a no or a yes. So if you're ever stuck, think about it in a rating system, rate it, don't use the number seven and see where you land. Now, you guys know that I see my time and your time as an asset. I am a real big believer in being really intentional on how you use your time and making sure that you see it as something that is actually slipping away and you wanna make the most of it. So being really conscious of how you choose to use your time, being completely okay with saying no to the things that you don't want to do is a really good way of guarding your time and making sure that it's really precious to you. I'm a big believer in a firm and polite no versus a wishy-washy maybe because you often end up, when you end up doing things that you either, like you don't want to do or you wish that you hadn't committed to, you don't show up fully. So the person will appreciate the fact that you've been polite and said no, as opposed to um, you know doing things half-heartedly. So just keep that in mind um, when you are looking at your time as an asset and being polite in your hard no's. Now, when it comes to the things on your to-do list that you kind of just still need to do, do the hard stuff first. So there are definitely things that I have to do in the business and in my life that I can't delegate to other people or I just don't have the capacity to do that. So I need to get those tasks actioned myself. Now I make a point to schedule those things as early in the day as possible. Um, I like to use that back end of the day for my fun, creative elements of what I do in the business and in my life. And, and so I make sure that I get all the hard stuff done first. Um, I also make a point to do the hard stuff first and then kind of have a bit of a reward system. So you might choose to wait and have your second coffee or your morning coffee or whatever it is until like you've done that task first. So just keep that in mind um, if that works for you. Now, the thing that you need to be conscious of is I personally know that I kind of I, I enjoy my day best in the afternoon, so that's why I wanna get the hard stuff done first. But if you're um, the kind of person that gets up super early and you wanna make the most of that time and then you wanna do the hard stuff at a particular point in the day, just be really mindful of what works best for you and the flow of how you run in the day. Um, but allocate the hard stuff for a specific time. And in most cases, most people will, be, will benefit from doing the hard stuff first. Now, the last thing that I want to remind you of when it comes to decision fatigue, but specifically when you're making decisions is please listen to your body. I get super hangry. Like I'm not a pleasant person to be around when I push myself too far and I've forgotten to have lunch or I've done this and I've done that. And then I'm a bit cranky and I can't work out why. It's just cause I'm hungry. So don't make decisions when you're hungry and don't make decisions or avoid making decisions when you're hungry or when you're tired or when you're overly stressed or um, when you're distracted. Um, listen, tune in to what's going on in your body. Go have a glass of water, go have a bite to eat, um, go get some fresh air, do what you need to do and then come back to that decision because you'll hopefully feel fresher and you'll realize that you, uh, you know, have the risk of making the wrong decision if you are not tuning into what's going on with your body. Now, that's all from me today when it comes to my tips on how you can make better decisions and hopefully reduce some of that decision fatigue. If you'd like to learn more or just to have a chat with me, I am still running our free consultation calls, um, which we do right throughout the year and we're, there's still bookings available. 
between now and the end of the year. So if you just want to have a chat about how these apply to you and how you can kind of weave them into your methodologies between now and the end of the year as we start planning for 2021, then feel free to head on to our website, organisecuratedesign.com, um, head to the contact us page and you can book a session with me. It's complimentary, so make the most of it. And um, I look forward to chatting with you soon.